Welcome to the Creative Suite Podcast, Episode 11, and here comes your host, Mike McHugh. Hi everyone and welcome to episode 11 of my Creative Suite podcast. Episode 11 marks the start of series 2 of my Creative Suite podcast. Series 1, episode 1 through to 10 is now available on DVD and you can go ahead, high resolution mind you, you can go ahead to my website and have a look um, at that if you'd like to get a copy of that very, very cheap price. Haven't decided what it is yet. I'll put it up later on. So, I'd like to send a huge shout out to a fantastic guy, Terry White. He had me on his Creative Suite podcast last week. I did a session on typography in InDesign. It was really great. I was flying the flag for Australia. There we go. Uh, and I think hopefully my voice wasn't too weird uh, for all those folks outside of Australia. So thank you, Terry White. He is an absolute legend among men. So Terry... Thanks, bro, if you're watching. Okay, that's enough of that rubbish. We've talked about the DVD. We've talked about Terry White. He's unreal. Let's talk about the tip because I've got an absolute cracker for you. I'm not going to say anything about it, but if you like Illustrator and you've been using Illustrator for a little while, you're going to love this. Okay, here I am. Later on. Oh, well, another great little tip for you. This time in Illustrator CS2, and I think this is going to be a little bit of a flashback for some people that have been using Illustrator for some time. We're going to go ahead and have a look at what has happened to the Blend tool. I love using Illustrator. We can do some great stuff in here, and this one is going to be no exception. Before we get started, I have got something really cool. We'll test it out this episode. I have had the spotlight, which is mouse pose A, for those of you who are interested. It highlights a certain area on the screen. It's got a new function now, which I can switch on, and it means uh, any keyboard shortcut I type in, uh, let's say Command or Apple C, it will show you on the screen as I do it. So um, hopefully that might give you a, an idea. If I forget to say a shortcut, you'll understand Command C uh, for copy, or it could be any little shortcut that I use throughout this uh, episode. Uh, you'll be able to see what's going on. So I'll leave that on for the episode. Give us some feedback if you don't like it through the website, uh, and I'll get rid of it. I don't mind. First thing, switching tools. You know, here's a few shortcuts for you. Uh, v for the selection tool. A for the direct selection tool. Oh, I'm just mucking around now. Okay, I'll get it. I'll get on with it. The blend tool. Here it is. Here for those of you who are watching on the iPod, uh, it's over here on the left hand side. There it is. There, the blend tool. W on the keyboard, isn't it? Oh, this is going to get annoying. I tell you what, I'll turn it on later on when we need it. I'll do some shortcuts. The blend tool down here is what we're talking about. It used to be in Illustrator that when we wanted to make a gradient, we used to have to use this blend tool because the tool just above it there, uh, the actual the actual blend tool, didn't exist back in the days of Illustrator 3 and Illustrator 88 and all of those things. We used to have to draw two shapes and then blend between them. So this is what we do. We'd get a line. I'm just going to hold my shift key down. I'll draw a line there and I'll color it a color. Let's say yellow. I will then duplicate that line across by option, shift, click and drag like so. Uh, and I'll make it a different color. And what we would have to do is then use the blend tool to click on one point of one of these shapes and then click on the other point of another shape and it would blend between the two. In this case, it's intersected them over because the start and the end are in different spots. But that's the general idea and that would create a blend. I'm going to undo that and delete, and I will go ahead and delete this one. It would draw a ton of different shapes across to create what would be a gradient 
but in fact would be a whole bunch of different shapes. It's changed quite a bit. We're going to create a space worm with it. So if I go up here and grab a circle, have a look at this. I'm going to do a circle here and we'll just fill it with something. So we'll get started, fill it with yellow. I'm going to do another circle over here and we'll fill it with a different color just to get the idea of it. I'll flip that over again, the yellow. I'll just switch onto the fill there. Have a look at this. I'm going to get the blend tool again and I can click at the top, click at the top again, and it will blend between the two shapes. But it hasn't drawn all the shapes in between. As a matter of fact, I can alter the shape of this and it will blend between the two completely different shapes. And here's a little bit of a, uh, a tip for, for those old dab hands at Illustrator. What if I wanted to then go to a completely uh, different shape with a different color? I might be able to blend between three shapes. I'll click on that one and then I'll click on this one. That is outrageous. We can now blend between as many different shapes as we like and keep moving them around. As a matter of fact, I'm going to select this. I'll press E. Uh, I won't press E on my keyboard because I was going to scale it with E, but I'll select it uh, this way uh, and I will just scale this down. I can scale it down uh, with my little scaly tool there. Shift key down, keep it in proportion, make it smaller. It automatically adjusts. So we're using the blend tool to go between three shapes. Well, it could be as many shapes as you like. Well, let's go back a few steps now. So I'm just going to press uh, Apple Z, Apple Z, Apple Z, Apple Z, and we'll go back to just our two circles. Okay, I'll move this one over here. Instead of using plain colors, a lot of people don't realize that you can actually go ahead and use gradient fills. So here I've got a steel cylinder gradient fill in my swatches. I can just click on this one. I'll click the same steel cylinder gradient fill on both of my circles. It goes a bit funny. Well, why is it doing this? Why is it telling me that, well, Mike, I'm only going to put one extra circle in between? There are settings for this blend, and it's under the object menu. And when we have a look at them, you'll understand why. So object, blend, and blend options. So what the blend options are trying to do is in fact create a smooth color transition between my circles. But because they're the same color and they're the same gradient, it can't do that, can it? So what can we do? Well. Here's what we do. We change from smooth color to specified steps. And what I'm going to do is type in 150. We turn on the preview and it will create a smooth blend between the two. Maybe 150 is too much. It's not redrawing fantastically there, is it? Let's press OK. And there we have a smooth gradient and it looks like a steel cylinder now. And if you just, if we zoom in, you might see all the little lines in between. So that's great. Okay, I'm going to select this again. It's still editable, of course, and that's the way we like to, to do everything. I can press E on the keyboard. I can scale that down. Okay, because I'm in free transform tool when I do that. And I can make it change perspective like that. Now, here is the bonus tip. For those of you playing at home, if you want a bonus tip, I'm sure you do. I can now curve this. I'm going to go ahead and use the Add Anchor Point tool on the spine. I can then go ahead and use the Convert Anchor Point tool to a curve and I can bend this spine to create what this lesson is all about. I'm calling this the Space Worm Technique. I think it's a great technique. I'm going to go ahead. I can keep adjusting this. I press E. I can make it smaller. I can bend it any way I like. And of course, uh, it wouldn't be one of my lessons if I hadn't gone to a bit of extra trouble and put a background uh, with some stars in there. Let's go ahead and hide all of this stuff because that is my space worm technique using the blend tool. We'd all forgotten it was there. It's there. And I think it's wonderful. Get into the blend tool, have a bit of a go at it. I'm sure you're really going to love it. <laughs>